car audio, etc. is proudly supported by Auto Sound and Security. Good morning guys, how's it going? James here from Car Radio etc. Back at it again on the Legacy. I've started on the driver's door, like I've been getting all the existing sound deadening off, cleaning the stuff off the outer skin, whoop, outer skin of the door. And like, yeah, I'm just doing a time lapse at the moment, trying to get as much of it done as I can. I really need to bang this out. Super worried about having to mount the speaker in, because I've worked out that I need like a 27 to 30 millimeter wooden spacer and that's barely going to fit inside the door card so it's going to be a tight ass squeeze but hopefully it all works out okay i'm going to sandwich a piece of nine millimeter mdf and a piece of 18 millimeter mdf to make a nice big chunky spacer and it just has to be like that because there's this freaking like window is so close to here and it's just so close to being the exact depth of the factory speaker that I hope we don't have any, you know, total depth issues, but um, I'm still going to try and make it work. Grant's about to bring the Defender in. I thought I'd, you know, start recording now so I can show you guys some of that, what it's getting. He got, oh, he did get the box out, cool. So what the Defender is having, I just want to show you guys this now before I, you know, get back into the uh, legacy stuff. It's having one of these OEM style mirrors. Basically, it's a mirror that, that you know, you mount to the car it's not like a clip over aftermarket style it actually replaces the whole thing and it's got a screen in it, it has a startup logo although i'm not sure if land rover is going to be in there and then for the camera we're doing this uh, we haven't done one of these cameras before so i'm just going to see how it turns out this is one of our suppliers little commercial ones it's like we have bigger ones than this but this is the mini commercial style so we'll see how that turns out and then we've got a five meter extension cable and a uh, four pin to rca adapter Boat. How do you like your new boat? It's got Focals. Yeah, he's got some good speakers, eh? He's got Focal K2 series speakers. They're really good speakers. They've got the same in the back, I think. Yeah, Focal K2 4 inch components. And a decent stereo. So, this mirror, you just go like this. And that obviously unscrews. I was hoping you'll be able to either fabricate or use this thing somehow, which can screw up and screw down to put one of the uh, ABS mirror mounts up there somehow. It does come with a, a stick-on thing to go on the window as well. Oh yeah. I think he quite likes the idea of it being up, because like this one hangs yeah. down really low, and I think he likes the idea of the mirror being up higher, which is what that mirror yeah, will end up looking like. This oh, thing, good point. See. I see, yeah. Mm -hmm. Didn't think about that actually. Long story short, I think we want the mirror up like here. Camera up there, far Yeah, right. that's the lights. And then the tires in the way. Yeah, I know. I don't think he's too bothered about seeing the tow ball though. That's where I discussed with him. That there's gonna cut that off way down to there. He needs one of those, what was it a Jeep or a Land Rover thing that it's I showed it's you with the. Yeah, it really needs to go on there. Someone needs to make more spare tire camera mounts. The other thing would be to have a, a out on a rod. A, a bar or something out here. <laughs> yeah. That's not silly either. I, don't, I still don't think you'd see the table from up there. No, you wouldn't. Because it's just like straight down. Go on. There you go. Have fun. There you go. I could cable tie it to that. Just put a couple of self-tapping screws through there. No, just a couple of cable ties around here. Double sided tape. Cable tie it on. That, look, that actually looks really good, I like it. It's bright. This, this tie is just for show. Pretty sure that's a reverse light up there actually. Okay, well I'm gonna oh, leave Grant happy up here on doing this. Yeah, we'll I reckon there would be better. Yeah. It'd be good if we could move that there across to the middle. Yeah, yeah then it's just hard to get to. It's just hard to get to then. The bike. If the bike's in the middle of the car. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna continue on this. So I'm at the stage where I'm just sort of, you know, still cleaning shit off. I've just gotten all the foam and everything off now. I need to 
do the disgusting, messy part of spraying everything with... Okay, I'm going to have to do some messy work now. I'll hop back on the time lapse. <sighs> Great. Then after that I'm going to be trying to fabricate up some uh, baffles. Okay guys, making good progress. I've got the outer skin done. It is 20 to 12. So how long has that taken me? Probably about a couple hours. I mean, it's hard to say how long it's taken me. It's just this car is a lot slower for the sound deadening, mainly because of the fact that I have to do so much freaking cleaning and removal of the original sound deadening material. Normally all I have to do is spray some wax and grease remover on it give it a wipe, wait for it to evaporate, and then stick it on and it's, you know, done. But this one I'm having to clean dirt and gunk and oil and all the factory sound deadening. I'm gonna have to get rid of this, some of this stuff, I think. I mean, I'll leave lot, some of it on there, but I'm gonna try and get rid of most of the chunky bits. But yeah, got the Focal Bam done really nicely. Goes all the way, I'll, I'll get my phone out and put the torch on, see if you guys can see a bit better. Goes all the way down into the corner there. Out to the side, goes up quite high, pretty much all the way up to the door handle there. And you can see I put some like, I, I like to put it around where the speaker is as well, so like on this bottom surface and up the side, so that any side waves are cancelled out. So pretty much the whole surface is done. It was easier to show you guys when I had the, uh, when I was using the GoPro for my videoing, because I could just stick it in the door there, but this thing's a bit bigger now, so. You guys will just have to take my word for it and know that I'm pretty good at doing the, the bamming nowadays. So I got that whole skin done. I'm gonna move on to doing the dead skin on this outer skin here next. And I need to do the speaker wires, which I'm still, once again, not looking forward to. Um, let me show you where Grant's up to, because he's on a break at the moment, he's just on a phone call. So he's got the camera mounted up there, which just looks real good. Yeah, nice. He's mounted it up as high as possible and dead in the center of the car. This just needs to be out just a wee bit more. Whoops. Just a wee bit more because that's what we do is we have a little bit hanging down here of wire and that's a drip loop so when it rains the water all forms at the bottom of the wire here and drips off rather than like feeding into the hole of the grommet or into the camera or anything like that. And we're at, so there's all this there's all this excess here, but what we're going to do is have the connection right up in behind here with all of this excess stain so that um, if he ever wants to move the camera, like bring it out further this way so we can see down past the tyre, then we can put a bracket on it and there's enough slack here to, you know, basically bring it all the way out. That's looking good though. I like the way he's done it. I don't think I said this earlier in the um, video, but all the stuff is here, by the way, except for the... Yeah, it's on. All the stuff is here except for the stereo. Unfortunately, our suppliers sent us the mechless version of the stereo, the MVH, rather than the AVH, which has the DVD player in it. So we're getting another one of those overnight. Um, but the speakers have all arrived. We've already got the three-way set out. And the amplifier has arrived. We've got it just sitting down there. That's probably how it's gonna sit. Right, onto the dead skin. As far as, um, in case any of you guys are wondering, I'm not sure if any of you guys have used Dead Skin before or Dynamat, um, but personally, after having used Dynamat for a long time and now this stuff, they both claim to be one and a half millimeters thick, and I don't. And I did try measuring it with my uh, little caliper set, and they both did seem to measure about one and a half millimeters. But I don't have a digital set; I've only got an analog set. But um, Personally, I like the Dynamat better. I don't know if it's the thickness of the tin or the aluminium that's on it, but the dead skin is definitely more malleable and floppy than the Dynamat. Just that small amount extra floppiness is enough for it to be slightly too much. Like Dynamat is pretty much perfect, like mainly just for covering up the holes in the doors and stuff. I prefer 
the Dynamat, like I can do two layers of that and it's stiff as. Whereas with um, this dead skin, it's just not quite there. Maybe the aluminum, aluminum that they used is just a bit thinner or something, but it's okay. We wanted to give it a go since it was, uh, for us, the same cost price as Dynamat was for the same amount. So we've given it a go now, we'll go through this stuff and then probably we'll end up switching back to a Dynamat because personally I think it, it feels better to apply. But I do still <coughs> love Focal Bam so much more with the acoustic foam and even the Butyl looks a wee bit thicker as well. It's just so much nicer. The other stuff that's out there that I know is very similar to Focal Bam is sound skins. And there must be someone in New Zealand who imports it because someone I know in Dunedin, I think, was it you Simon, Simon Wright? You used sound skins on your car? But I'm not sure if you imported that yourself or if, it, or if you got it from a dealer or what, but that stuff I think is very similar to BAM with the acoustic foam, but yeah. Anyway, moving on. Show must go on. Grant's on his hands and knees. I need to put this on there. Cool. skin completely sanded with the dead skin and I realized that I forgot to run speaker wires through so the other one I got them to come out of here but I forgot so what I've had to do was I got a mouse lead through the kick panel through the grommet and up out of here and you'll see if I pull on this There it is there. Don't ask me how I did it, but I did. I managed to get this little piece of plastic, <clears throat> plastic wire stuff. Got that through a hole in the grommet, all the way down and out of there. And it's easy to say, but freaking hard to do. So I've uh, then got my eight gauge wire and wrapped it in tape around the uh, end of it there and sprayed it with some silicon to lube it up. The reason I'm using 8 gauge wire is because I am going to have to run three speaker wires through into this door so I want to make sure that I can pull something rather thick through it. So now I'm going to try and pull it through. Push and pull at the same time. There we go. like that. Awesome. Now I'm going to want my tweeter and mid-range wire to come out of this hole so I can do that but then my woofer wire is just going to come out of this hole here. Let me just, okay, okay so that goes, that goes there in front of the window rail. Okay. So now I need to work out how much wire I need, cut some strips of wire and then attach them to the end of this and pull them through and then I can start running them over to the area where the crossovers are. Okay guys so I got a I think a good idea going on here what I've actually done is taken the driver's seat out I worked out that the two plugs on the bottom of it one of them was just power for the electric seat and the other one was for the seat belt clicker connector thing so no airbags whatsoever so I could unplug that take the seat out it's making it way easier for me and what that's allowing me to do is I want to take the shortest possible route for the speaker wires A to you know save him money by not having super long speaker wires and B you know just lower impedance which is better so what I'm doing is um, now that I can actually hop in the car here and squat um, the speaker wires for the front right door and the rear right door are going to come out of the crossover and the amplifier and they're going to sort of run along up 
over the tunnel, down, along here, and then about here they're going to split off. And I've already loomed up with this loom a fourth set of speaker wires, which is the rear right speaker wire. This one is going to duck off to here, go up through the B pillar into the door and down to the speaker. You can't see because it's real dark. And then these are my three front speaker wires, which are going to run along up through the grommet and out of the hole. And so it's all going to be under the carpet, away hidden. It's going to look good. And I also just thought it'd be a really good opportunity for me to um, set up a female RCA head and a couple of, like a positive and negative uh, crimp for power for the headrest screen rather than having it like hardwired or anything just jumping out of the back of it I'm gonna have it all the connections are gonna be here like there'll be an RCA head and a couple of crimps for the power for it and then that'll run off up to the head unit so taking the seat out is actually I think allowed me to do a few extra things which is good so now as I said I need to pull that through I've already taped it up let's, uh, let's yank it through and then after that I'll run these four speaker wires under the carpet over to the amplifier area. Okay, <sighs> got the CRC 808 silicon. Just spray up the taped area, makes it more lubri and goes through easier. There we go. And now we start pulling this through. Oh yeah, that'll be enough. Almost, almost there. There we go. Now we untake this. I need to make sure I've got enough of this green focal wire through because this has to go behind there. I just want a wee bit more. More is less. Oh yeah, I think I'll just do that. That can just go there, and now these two need to pop out of here. There we go. Okay, there's my mid-range and tweeter wire, and there is my woofer wire. Cool. And now all this is going to run back that way. Actually, what I need to do, you'll be able to see I've got a fair bit of excess here. What I actually need to do is start running from the amp side first and then correct it at the other end because this wire here for the rear right is on the short side a wee bit and this I think was only just going to reach so I want to make sure I've gone as short as possible as I can from the amp so I think I'll do that end first and then if there's any excess here I'll just pull it through okay so once again I'm going to hop on another time lapse and I'm going to run all of these speaker wires under the carpet and over to the amp location guys more progress made um, I got the speaker wires run completely out of the door they track along the bottom of the floor actually you can see them in some conduit just there and then they I put them in some conduit to go under the rail here so they're not actually even run with the factory wiring that is up here whereas the speaker wires are down there they come under and then they go underneath all of this straight up and over down to the amplifier section and out just over there and then here's the uh, rear right speaker wire hopefully there's enough there for the whole thing and then I've also just done um, the connections for the headrest monitor so I've got a female RCA lead here video out on it and a couple of crimps for the uh, positive and negative to power it so that's all done and since I was doing that I um, tidied up the area under the seat as well because these wires were just sort of hanging out here loose so I do I made all the leads the same length wrapped them completely in tessa tape it's gonna be hard to see but that's the wire bundle there it's all wrapped in tessa tape now so it's protected just sort of you can see some of it in there it just sort of ducks up and around and then it's cable tied on there you can plug them in Actually, I can tip this up now. 
So that's good to go. All that stuff is done. So what I can probably work on now is starting doing some baffles to get the uh, speakers in. I want to tackle the mid bases first because they're going to be the hardest. And if it's going to be impossible, there's no point in me having done the tweeter and uh, mid range. So I need to tackle these mid bases. So as I said at the beginning of the video, I'm going to make some 27 mil baffles, I think, with a piece of nine mil, a nine mil thick piece of wood which matches the shape of the factory pod and then an 18 mil which an 18 mil piece of wood which matches the shape of the woofer so it's going to be a two layer sandwich thing and then that will equal 27 millimeters deep which I have worked out by this very clever scientific method scientific method of kind of trying to slam them in the hole that it should be deep enough I could go 30 but then that would mean that the wires are further out Ugh. So, woofer, piece of 18, piece of 9, and it goes all the way on there. And the woofer does not hit anything. I can see down in here that it just clears everything. And by the time I add a couple of layers of gasket tape, like foam tape, in between the baffle in the speaker and the baffle in the door that will space it out just a tiny few microns uh, you know millimeters more just to get it a bit further away from this piece of metal but what I'm going to do is actually put some foam on that piece of metal anyway so that in the event of it coming really close to the back of the speaker it'll just sort of softly like this carpet uh, just sort of smooth over it rather than scratch it but don't worry, it, it won't be like hitting it and scarring or anything like that. I wouldn't let that happen. I wouldn't put it in if that was going to be the case. So, now that I know depth-wise it's going to fit in there with that, it's really hard to tell if it's going to work in the door card or not. All I really have to do is try it. Just have to build a baffle, try it in there and try to put the door card back on. And hopefully the door card goes all the way on. Sometimes I have to carve plastic out from the inside of the door card, like bits of plastic that are sticking out. It's really annoying because these are the type of speaker which have quite a proud membrane. But we'll see what we can do. I have 9mm. 9mm. Where am I going to get some 9 So here's what Grant's done for the uh, mirror. We basically just made up, if I can focus, this panel here, focus, that's made out of aluminium. Sorry, it's really hard with the light behind it, but um, there we go, that's a better look. This panel here is made out of aluminium, and then he just extended that down onto the mirror, and it had to be extended down like that because there was an issue with getting these to come down. As you can see, it'll hit, but um, if you turn this, I believe, like that, then you can put these down. So that's how he's done it. That was just, just, he was just demonstrating it. Actually. Do that again, James. <laughs> Twist it that way. Oh, you go. And then you can Piece of cake. I don't yeah. put those up and down very often, you see. The so. driver's one, because it's penned more this way, this comes down quite a long way before it even gets close to hitting oh, it. Okay. Um, so you'll probably find um, you won't need, because you're as tall as me, I found that I didn't even need to have it on this side. Yeah. You could have it. Um, on this side, and it was still giving you plenty of coverage. Yep. Yeah. And even when this is down over top of this a bit, it's still not hiding the screen. Yeah, there are so, some screens on the left of it, isn't it? Yeah, so. Oh, wow. Oh, no, wait. Can't see it. There we go. <laughs> it's actually really hard to tell what you're looking at, isn't it? Because the wall's right there. Oh, I'll just get used to how yeah. far it came over. Yeah, you, you, you see if you're happy with that, and if not, we're... 
Oh, right. The trailer's yeah. so low and the rear view mirrors are so shit. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. It was mainly yeah, for, it was mainly for just... driving the trailer eh, and reversing it rather than actually backing up to it. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. obviously you can't see your tow ball because there's a tyre on the way. I back up to the trailer because it just... Takes a ding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Touch back. Bit of hell Oh, that's worked good. Grant did a uh, good job of that. I just had to rush out there quickly and film and try and show you guys a bit before he took it took it away because I've been busy getting dusty and working hard on this legacy. I totally, you know, forgot to film anything of it. But it looks really good. That little extension panel he made um, looks really nice and we were like, you know, stewing over what we were going to do about the fact that it was just going to be in the way of those sun visors. So what I so he was really happy. Oop, the customer was really happy with that. That's good. That's what we want. So now I'm just working on doing this woofer fitment test. Still, uh, what have I done? I've mounted the copy baffle to the car, mounted in the factory three screw holes, and followed through the speaker mounting holes with the drill bit. Actually, I've followed through only like one or two of them. I need to go more. Okay, I think I need a new drill bit, but I'm just uh, following these through so that I can then mount the speaker, the woofer, to this baffle. The, screw, the screws will go through the speaker, through this, through that, and into the car, and then the woofer will be mounted. And then I'm going to put the door card on and try and put it all back together and just make sure that the woofer is basically out of the way. Yeah. Okay, so I got the woofer mounted in the door on both the bits of wood. I know it's ugly at the moment, but when the finished product will be much prettier. Uh, so it's in there, got three screws all the way through. For some reason, the fourth one just doesn't quite line up. That always happens when you're trying to sandwich one, two, three, and the door. So four things all together with the screw holes all lining up perfectly. That always happens. So now I'm gonna try and stick the door card on and hopefully it goes on all the way. Uh, is there any, there is that pop right there and that pop there that I need to worry about. As long as this big piece of wood here doesn't hit on anything, that could become an issue when I'm trying to test fit it actually. Because the piece of wood I'm going to make is going to be the exact shape of the speaker rather than this big wide one. I might actually just shave this baffle down itself, you know. Anyway. Okay, let's get the door card. Yeah, hopefully it works. Actually, one thing I want to test before I pop it all the way on is I've got that plugged in I need to check the window goes up and down let's just watch the window real quick yep that completely clears the speaker so we're okay there Well, around the bottom, and up here it's all good, there is a piece of Dynamax sticking, uh, sorry, dead skin sticking out here I need to cut off. Just having a bit of trouble looking a hole in there. But I think that is completely on. Let's try and have a look at the woofer. Oh, she's right there. <laughs> what I might try and do, I'm going to Put a signal down the speaker wire and see if we get any sound or anything out of it. Any? Oh wait, I haven't hooked it up. Bugger. Okay, I can't do that. Um, but what I do need to do is mark that. Okay. I can see most of the surround, so that's good. I need to pop this off now and see if there's any marks on the surround from the plastic. Okay. Looks all good so far. So now I can, one thing that was stopping the door going, the door card going all the way back on was all the holes are covered up by uh, dead skin. So I can now, now that I've poked their holes, I can cut those out. Okay guys, that's, what's that? 
That's going to be it for today guys, I'm going to have to call it there, it's after 5 o'clock, it's time to go home and edit this video. Um, <clears throat> the test fit was successful, so that's good, I'm able to use the 9mm plus 18mm baffle combo to get the speaker in there, where it doesn't hit the window and it doesn't hit the door card, so I'm happy. Only problem is that we still haven't gotten the front speakers done, or the amplifier, or the stereo, and tomorrow is supposed to be my last day on it and I've tried getting in contact with the customer but I'm not getting an answer. This is not his daily car though, this is like his second car so hopefully he'll be you know, you know, willing to let us keep it for a wee bit longer. Unfortunately I'm not going to be able to work on it on Thursday because I have another job but Friday I'm totally free to keep going on it but this job's just taking me a lot longer than I thought it would because of the existing system and sound deadening I had to pull out and yeah, these, is it third or fourth generation legacies, almost every time I've put, had to put a woofer in this location. I think it's just a real tight fit. They just, it's just a real tight fit between the window and the door card, and I've had issues with these cars before, just because of that. But we're getting there, we're making progress. Better to do it right slowly than wrong fastly. So we are making progress. What this means is tomorrow I will be able to get the woofer and the midrange and the tweeter all done and wired up and this door car back together and probably the same with the driver's one as well. I just need to make the second half of that baffle and then copy those shapes again to make the baffle for the driver's side. And before I glue it all together I need to remember to copy, I think I need to copy the uh, shape, the small baffle shape need to make sure I copy this to a master so that I can make more for the back doors because I don't know if the back doors are going to be the same as the front or not. Hopefully there's a bit more depth in there and I don't have to worry as much. So I just got to make sure I copy another one of those. But anyway, thanks for watching today's video guys. Thank you for all your support and I will see you tomorrow continuing on the legacy. Cheers for watching, choose to be happy and I'll catch you tomorrow. Kakitano.